السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وبه نستعين ونصلي ونسلم على أفضل الخلق أجمعين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد All praise is due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى Complete blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم his entire household, as well as all his companions, may Allah bless them all and all those who have struggled and strived to learn the deen, protect it in a way that it has today come to us. They passed it on. May Allah make us from those who can pass it on as well. And may Allah accept us and may he include us in the prayers of those to come who will remember those who have served the deen, protected it and conveyed it to others. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open our doors we have just completed the recitation of the Quran and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us every form of acceptance on this eve and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept every letter we have read and to grant us every single one of us ease in the difficulties we have everyone has different difficulties and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows them before we utter them Amin. Yesterday we had spoken about the final or farewell Hajj. Yesterday we spoke about the farewell Hajj. And we asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the ability to come back this evening and to continue. So here we are speaking. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us all. We had made mention of when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was in Arafah. When he was in Arafah, it was a Friday. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave a lecture. He gave several lectures, what were known as khutab, the khutbah on the day of Arafah. The khutbah the following day. And the khutbah the following day. Three days in a row. And whenever he had had the opportunity, he kept repeating certain words. The lectures were more or less similar. What I will do for you today is we will make mention of the points or some of the points of these lectures. Not necessarily just the one on Arafah, but even the ones that happened the following day and the following day, which were all on the same topic. And as I have said moments ago, he repeated the words again and again. Firstly, he asked his companions on the day of Nahar, what day is it today? They were thinking perhaps he is going to give it a different name until he said, is this not the sacred day, the day of Nahar? He responded, yes, or they responded, yes. Is this not the sacred month? Yes. Are we not in the sacred city? Yes. Well, you should know that your wealth and your lives as well as your honor and dignity amongst yourself is all sacred just as the sacredness of this day in this month, in this city, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted it. So remember the status that we have among one another. Our lives are sacred. Our wealth is not supposed to be usurped. And our honor and dignity, all this is granted a status by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one is to harm the other in any way. This was the bottom line of the message or that particular statement. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Then he says, everything that was laid out in the pagan era is now thrown under my feet. It is cancelled, null and void. All the evil that was happening is null and void. Thrown under my feet, gone for good. We have opened a new era and a new chapter of goodness and of piety, of Worship of Allah alone without any idols, without any association of partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he included in that the issue of interest known as riba. He says the interest is all cancelled and it is bad and abomination, the handiwork of the devil. It shall not be repeated and we will not be engaged in it as believers. From this day on it is deleted and cancelled. And any of you who have any dealings of interest, it is dropped. And what you are owed is only your capital. 
And he went on to say, even from my own family, those who are owed monies, I am telling the rest of you that any interest amount is completely cancelled. What is owed is only the capital. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to surrender to this. This was the message in the farewell pilgrimage. And we had said the reason why it is called a farewell pilgrimage is because it was the only hajj. And yet it is there where he greeted the people and he told them perhaps I will not meet you after this so he bidded farewell to them may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a lesson thereafter he spoke about the way they used to kill one another and he says blood is sacred in one narration he says it is higher than the status of the Kaaba in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so to kill one another to harm one another is very dangerous and he continued to say, people have been killing one another for no reason. That is all gone under my feet. We will never engage in that type of pagan behavior after this day. Then he continued to say, fear Allah, fear Allah, be conscious of Allah regarding your women. Be careful how you treat your women. This was the advice of the Prophet ﷺ in the last year. Which means in this farewell pilgrimage, he is giving advice saying, be careful how you treat your women. Be careful about women. You have taken them with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your spouses, your wives, he is speaking about here. He says, you took them with the name of Allah. Be careful, who are they? I'd like to pause for a moment and take us all back. Or should I say, take us all to who are our own wives? They are the daughters of people. They also have their family members. They have left everything in order to come to us. How can we then oppress them? The Prophet ﷺ warns us about oppressing women. And that having been said, today we have a new type of a problem where women are oppressing men. May Allah grant us ease. And this is a reality. We need to remind the sisters as well. Make life easy for your husbands, not difficult. Allah has put you as a gift so live your life as a gift. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the coolness of our eyes in our spouses, male and female. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who can fulfill our rights and even beyond our rights. May he make us from those who can give even much more. May Allah grant us through his mercy. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam warns the believers. He says, لا ترجعوا بعدي كفارا يضرب بعضكم رقاب بعض do not turn after me to disbelief by fighting and killing one another. Don't do that. Do not harm one another. Do not fight one another. Remember, you are brothers. You are believers. You are to be like one body. If the head is aching, the entire body is restless. If a small organ is paining, the entire body is restless. This is the example of the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He continues to give advice. He says, in fact, a verse was revealed. That verse was recited by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this verse made Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu cry. What was the verse? This day I have perfected your religion. And this day I have completed my gift upon you, Allah is telling us. And I have chosen Islam as your deen. You will submit to my commands. The meaning of Islam is submission. We submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May he forgive our shortcomings. May he make us from those who worship him alone. When this verse was revealed, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an began to cry. They asked him, why are you crying? He says, when anything gets to its peak after that, there is only coming down. Which means we perhaps may lose Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to understand that he lives in our midst in his example. And he lives in our midst in his teachings. And we need to follow that example in order to gain his intercession on the day of Qiyamah. So thereafter, the Prophet ﷺ told the people who were there, those who are present, who have heard me, convey the message to those who are absent, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he asks them, have I conveyed the message? They said, yes, you have. Have I conveyed the message? Yes, you have. 
Have I conveyed the message? Yes, you have. He raised his eyes to the sky saying, Allahumma fashhad. Oh Allah, bear witness that I have conveyed the message. Not only conveyed the message, but they have heard it and they bear witness that I have conveyed the message. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Beloved brothers and sisters, where are we and where is the message? Wallahi, it has come to us. Wallahi, he fulfilled his mission. Wallahi, he definitely did the best job possible. Today, we have it in our midst. We know exactly what he has said. We have studies of his entire life, the way he blinked his eyes, how handsome he was, how broad chested he was, how he was neither too tall nor was he too short, how those who looked at him loved him automatically, how his perspiration smelt better than any musk or amber that was there. How his hand was softer than anything else felt by those who shook it. Subhanallah. We've heard of everything. We know his description. We know what he brought. We know what he taught. Why do we then pay lip service alone to saying we love him yet we, our deeds are on another mountain altogether and his teachings are on a separate mountain. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. This is why we have days like this in order to reflect, to ponder, here is the man, we love him. It is part of our declaration of faith to add his name into Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa Ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship besides Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final messenger and prophet. Subhanallah. We utter those words in order to declare our faith. And yet, we still involve in interest. We still at the nightclubs. We're still in the casinos. We still cannot leave adultery. We cannot give up that which is a disgrace, not only to ourselves, to the ummah at large. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen us. Sometimes we cannot dress appropriately to save our lives. And yet, here is the messenger. The sacrifice they made. How much they went through. The lives that were lost in order for the message to get to us. And still we cannot cover our hair, the sisters. And still we cannot wear clothing that is loose, brothers and sisters. Remember, the issue of clothing is not only for the women. Yes, it is for the men as well. We need to make sure that our clothes are not tight fitting. We need to make sure that we do not fall into the trap of those who want to take us away from the deen by making us wear our jeans halfway down our backsides. May Allah protect us. This is the trend of today. We are Muslimin. The messenger suffered in order to get this message across to us. How could we ever claim to love him and wear that which will displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So my beloved sister, promise Allah to dress appropriately. It does not take much. In fact, you stand a better chance to enter paradise. May Allah grant us all paradise. May Allah forgive our sins. May Allah open our doors. It's an emotional moment when we speak of the last words of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To think, where are we and where was the message? May Allah forgive us. Wallahi, if you are shy to adopt what he has taught because of people, remember those people will never come in your grave with you. If you are shy to adopt what he taught because of people, those people will never be able to help you on the day of judgment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the intercession of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Thereafter, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam delivered the lecture and he read Dhuhr and Asr. And after that, he went close to what we know today as Jabal Rahmah. He did not climb the mount at all. But just near the mount, he faced the Qibla. And he made dua. And he prayed. And he supplicated for a long time until the sun set. Whilst he was in Arafah. And he made dua for his ummah. And as we know, his nation, most dear to him. The reason is... He was sent as a messenger with a duty to fulfill a message for all mankind and creatures. Mankind and jinn kind. And he was interested in knowing whether he fulfilled the message correctly. That's what it was. So every time he would make dua, Oh Allah, my ummah. When he was in Ta'if, he said, Oh Allah, I am complaining to you about my weakness because you put it on my shoulders to give these people the message. They don't want to listen to me, Ya Allah. They don't want to give me a chance. My beloved brothers and sisters, 
Amongst us are those who are as guilty as the people of Ta'if in a different way. We don't give Islam a chance. We don't want to listen to what is right and wrong. We will never attend sometimes an Islamic talk to save our lives. What's so different between us and the people of Thaqif? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. These are the lessons we learn from the seerah. Ask yourself, if I was there, where would I fit in? Would I fit in with Abu Bakr and Umar? Or would I fit in with Abu Jahl and Abu Lahab? May Allah protect us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us strength. Wallahi, these are words, words that make us cry. Words that make us think and weep. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam thereafter left for Muzdalifah. After the sun had set, he did not read Maghrib nor Isha. He left for Muzdalifah. As he got to Muzdalifah, he read his Maghrib. And thereafter, they had let the animals settle down and immediately he read his Isha Salah as well. And thereafter, he rested for a while and got up later on when it was early morning at the first time of Fajr. He was already having read Fajr. He got up and went to al Mash'ar al-Haram. Today, there is a masjid there in Muzdalifah known as al Mash'ar al-Haram because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had gone to that place and at that particular time, after the first time of Fajr, he had read his Fajr and he went there to make his dua. Until just before the sun had risen, he then proceeded. Proceeded to Mina. And when he proceeded to Mina, he had asked Ibn Abbas radiallahu an to collect some pebbles. So Ibn Abbas radiallahu an collected seven pebbles. And the Prophet sallallahu went to what is known as Al-Aqaba, the, the, the big the place where the devil was at the time of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, where he was instructed to pelt at the biggest force of the devil. We call it Jamratul Kubra, the big devil. And this is where he pelted seven pebbles where the shaitan was at the time of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, following what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had instructed him. And he kept telling his companions, Khudu anni manasikakum, which means, Follow what I am doing in terms of this hajj. Do as I am doing. In a nutshell, that is the meaning of khudu anni manasikakum. Take all your deeds and rituals from me and fulfill them according to what I am doing. This is what he taught his, message, his companions. And after he had pelted, he got up and he gave another lecture similar to the one he gave the previous day. And subhanallah, on that particular occasion, he told them, perhaps I may not meet you for another hajj. Perhaps I may not join you for another hajj. Perhaps you may not see me next year. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us lesson. Imagine the sahaba radiallahu anhum, in their thousands, they are listening to the words of the most beloved to them, whom they sacrificed their lives for in a literal sense. Subhanallah. Today we pay lip service. Those people gave their lives. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us at least to fulfill our salah. At least to dress appropriately. At least to replace those CDs that have in them the voices of shaitan and replace them with the voice of Rahman. May Allah subha meaning with the words of Rahman. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to substitute all that is evil for all that is good. Amin. And after that lecture, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went forth to sacrifice the animals they had brought from Medina Munawwara. He slaughtered with his own hand, sacrificed with his own hand, 63 camels. Subhanallah, on that day. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. They were sacrificing for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, following the example of Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. And up to 100, between 63 and 100, he handed it to Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu, who completed the 100. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called the barber and shaved his head. Very interestingly, we should know. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam shaved his head. He made a dua for those who have shaved their heads. The hair on their head. And thereafter, a person who had just trimmed his hair says, what about those who've trimmed? He continued to say, may Allah bless those who have shaved. Meaning shaving the hair of the head. And thereafter, he was asked again, what about those who have trimmed? He says, may Allah bless those who have shaved their heads. And after he repeated it thrice, the fourth time he says, 
and those who have trimmed as well. The lesson we learn, it's permissible to trim, but never let the love of your hair, never let the love of your hair exceed the love you have of your maker and creator. This is one thing we should know. My beloved sisters, my beloved brothers, never let the love of your hair exceed the love of your maker. Never let the love of what you look like exceed the love of your maker. So you think I am going to now do something to my face that is going to earn the wrath of my maker. Believe me, that face, we still want it in the best of forms, inshallah, even better than what we have now, we want it in the life after death. The way to do that, try and keep it as close as possible to what Allah has required. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ease and the strength to follow his instruction at all times. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam thereafter went back to the haram in Mecca to Al-Mukarramah and he had engaged in what is known as tawaf al-ifada or tawaf al-ziyarah and thereafter he came back to Mina, he spent the night there and the following day after Zawal he had pelted all three of the Jamrah and when he pelted all three of the Jamrah, verses were revealed. Some of the most powerful verses and we read them tonight. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Ida ja anasrullahi wal fatih. Wara aitan nasayad khuluna fidi nidlahi afwaja. Fasabih bihamdi rabbika was tawfid hu in hu kana tawaba. In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. When the help of Allah comes and the victory of Allah has come, then, and when you see all the people entering into the fold of Islam in huge armies, huge groups, large numbers, then declare the praise of your Rabb. Declare the praise of your Rabb and seek his forgiveness for indeed he is most forgiving. Subhanallah. The Sahaba radiallahu anhum, they were happy to hear these verses until they got to Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu. They asked him, Allah has given you a gift of translating and Allah has given you a gift of tafsir of the Quran. Tell us, what do you make of these verses? He began to cry. He says, these verses depict something. They show something. And they show that the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his mission is coming to an end. Subhanallah. So he understood it. That once you see all the people entering Islam, your mission was to come and deliver the goods. So these verses were revealed in the middle of the days of Tashriq. Whilst the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was in Mina, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a lesson. We know these verses. Whenever we read them, we should know what they meant and we should know when they were revealed. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam read these verses to his companion, subhanallah. And he continued giving them lecture upon lecture and he reminded them, I leave with you two things. For as long as you hold fast upon them, you will never go astray. One is the book of Allah and the second is my sunnah, my way, my traditions and my teachings. Subhanallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us. In this way, we will never be led astray. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. Thereafter, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spent the three days there in Mina. He, he remained in the evening as well. He slept in Mina. And he would pelt the shayateen one after the other after Zawal on those days. And thereafter, he went to Makkah al Mukarramah after those days at night in the evening. He had made his tawaf al wida' the farewell tawaf. And thereafter, he had instructed his people, let's leave and go back to Al Madin al Munawwara. So the companions all gathered, those from Madinah Munawwara, the Muhajirin and Ansar and the others, and they began to leave going to Madinah Munawwara until the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, just near Juhfa, he got his companions again and gave them another lecture. This time, he repeated a lot of the same words, warning them about how they should not be fighting amongst one another, how sacred it is to look after the life of people, to look after the wealth of people, the dignity and honor of people, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then he says, I ask you to be kind to my family members, subhanallah. And I ask you to be kind to my family members, 
Be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regarding my family members. So this was also a message given by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on his return journey. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the ability not only to honor the status of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by constantly sending blessings and salutations upon him, but even remembering his entire family at every time. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت وباركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from us for indeed anyone who sends blessings and salutations to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once Allah says I will return it to you tenfold ten times May Allah open our doors then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as he returned to Medina Munawwara, he spent the night in Dhil Hulayfa. Dhil Hulayfa is on the outskirts of Medina Munawwara. Message was sent to his homes to say that he is now back and they will come the following morning. The following morning, as he was going back home, he was thanking Allah, looking at Medina Munawwara, the peace of his own city, subhanallah, and how Allah had turned the hearts of all the people towards goodness. May Allah turn our hearts. Allahumma ya muqallib al-qulub, thabbit qulubana ala deenik. O oh Allah, who turns the hearts of people, turn our hearts towards the deen and not away from it. I mean. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as he's entering Medina, so many things coming to mind. He says, La ilaha illallahu wahdahu, none worthy of worship besides Allah alone. Sadaqa wa'dahu, he fulfilled his promise. Wa nasara abdahu, and he has helped his slave. Wa a'azza jundahu, and he has granted strength to his army. وَهَزَمَ الْأَحْزَابَ وَحْدَهُ And he is the one who singularly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who caused the entire alliance to be defeated. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us strength. So these were some of the words that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uttered. He came back to Medina Munawwara and this was in the month of Dhul Hijjah. And thereafter, he spent the next few months in Medina Munawwara. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam started preparing an army of Usama ibn Zayd radiallahu anhu because the Romans had started preparing an army to attack the Muslims once again. When he heard this, as was the norm, he said, let us prepare. So he began to prepare the army. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to visit Uhud and he used to visit Baqi' the graveyards where the martyrs were buried in Uhud and the graveyard of Baqi' of Medina Munawwara. He used to make dua for them and at the same time greet them. Assalamu alaykum. May peace be upon you, O you who are dwellers here of this graveyard from amongst the Muslims and Mu'mins. And inshallah soon we are going to be joining you. This is a dua of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Soon we are going to be joining you. May Allah have mercy on us and on you as well. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one day had attended a janazah in Baqi'ah. And on his return, it was approximately 28th or 29th of Safar. On his return, subhanallah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam suddenly suffered a headache. And the temperature rose so much. He had a sunnah, his sunnah, his way. What was his way? Whenever he had a headache, he would tie a band round his head and knot it up exactly where it was paining. This works. It actually does work. Subhanallah. Not only would it work for us, but it's an act of worship if we do it fulfilling a sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he had a band tied on his head because of his headache. And the heat was so much that it was felt even from the band. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fell ill on that particular day towards the end of Safar. His illness did not last more than two weeks. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as ill as he was, he would still lead the salah in the masjid because his house, his room in fact. Today when we say house, we talk of a three-roomed house, sometimes ten rooms. And sometimes we talk today of an suite, you know, an suite. When a person has the loo right next to the bed, may Allah protect us. This is the type of houses we have today. Still we are not happy. Three, four rooms, we are not happy. We still need more and more. MashaAllah, Allah has given us, why not? But look at the simplicity of the Prophet ﷺ. One little room, that was his place. Subhanallah. Each wife had one room. That's it. One room. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us simplicity in our lives. You see the point being made. We have so much, we still don't have contentment. 
they had something very little but they were the most content they were the happiest of people may allah open our doors the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam thereafter led the salah and he continued leading the salah the last week of his life he began to ask a question to his wives because he had several wives he was asking where am i tomorrow where am i going to be tomorrow where am i going to be tomorrow so they would say you're going to be here you're going to be there then they discussed amongst themselves look he is ill he is not well let him go where he wishes so that he doesn't have to ask this question again when they agreed on that they told him when they told him that he said if you would permit me let me spend some time in the house of aisha radiyallahu anha so he could not walk at that time sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was taken he walked very slowly with the help of al fadl ibn al abbas radiyallahu an and ali ibn abi talib radiyallahu an on the other hand and as they helped him he dragged his feet and he was taken to the house of aisha radiyallahu anha and he spent there the last week of his life sallallahu alaihi wasallam 5 days before he passed away sallallahu alaihi wasallam temperature increased severely until he fainted for a little while and he regained consciousness and he said bring me seven bowls of water the water from different wells this was rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam's instruction and pour it on me because i want to go out and speak to my companions the temperature is too high i will use this water in order for it to cool the temperature so that i can feel better to speak to my companions imagine in this condition he was still leading the salah and at the same time he wanted to speak to his companions so he used water to reduce he used water to reduce the temperature sallallahu alaihi wasallam and thereafter he felt much better he entered the masjid with his head tied with that band because of the headache and he sat on the mimbar and he spoke to his people and this is something that he said he says allah has cursed the people of the book because they have taken the graves of their messengers as places of worship these are his words they listening to him so he says never take my grave after me a place of worship neither worship it nor should you make it a festival these are the words of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam thereafter he says oh my people if i have harmed anyone or hurt you on your back here is my back you may come for recompense for indeed it's the day of recompense subhanallah and he opened up such that his back could be seen if i have hurt anyone on their back come come on this day because the day will come when nothing will help may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness sallallahu alaihi wasallam as ill as he was he is saying if i have harmed anyone if i owe anyone anything please let me know now it's reported one man came up and said that you, i am owed a few dirahim and he informed his sahaba radiyallahu anhum to sort him out to give him whatever was owed sallallahu alaihi wasallam thereafter he says i am advising you to be kind to be good and to understand the respect of the ansar the ansar will diminish in numbers the ansar the people of madina munawwara those who helped the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the muhajirin he says fulfill their right be kind towards them then he continued on that day whilst he was very ill he tells them indeed a slave from amongst the slaves of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah gave him an option to remain in the world and allah gave him the option to be granted the beauty of this world or to go and get from that which allah has kept with him so the slave has chosen to go and get that which is with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala immediately abu bakr as-siddiq radiyallahu anhu began to weep he couldn't hold his tears they asked him ya abu bakr why are you crying he says because the one being spoken about is not any ordinary worshiper he is speaking about himself allah gave him a choice to remain here or or to go to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he is telling us in a beautiful way i have chosen to go to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then he says my people 
I am most obliged to Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu an in his companionship and his sacrifice of his wealth and in my relation with him had had it not been for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have taken me as a Khalil I would have if I was given the permission to take a Khalil I would have taken Abu Bakr as a Khalil what is the meaning of Khalil Khalil is the highest level of love is known as al-khullah al-khullah meaning the love of the highest degree Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has declared that he has two of those khalils who are they one is Ibrahim alayhi salam one is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam these are akhilla may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness so he is showing the people his close link with Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors thereafter four days before he passed away the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa gave another talk and again he told them as salah as salah as salah my people don't leave salah remember salah is something you need to fulfill the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam four days before he passed away he gave the message of salah fulfill your salah make sure that you fulfill it he was still fulfilling it although his health had deteriorated may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and then he continued reminding them i leave with you two things don't forget if you hold fast on these two you will never be led astray my book sorry the book of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and my sunnah my way my habit my traditions my teachings my lifestyle may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the acceptance to study both of these and to put them into practice we are weak we are insane but remember if we have the intention and we start inshallah at least we will be moving up the ladder may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant it to us then on the Thursday before he passed away, four days before he passed away, on that Thursday, he, were, he did not come out for Salatul Isha on time. The companions were waiting for him in their safs. And what happened is, he fainted and he regained consciousness. He asked his wife Aisha radiallahu anha, have they fulfilled Isha? She said, no, they're waiting for you. He fainted again. And he gained consciousness. Have they fulfilled Isha? No, they're waiting for you. Tell them that Abu Bakr must lead them in Salah. So the message goes to Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. The people are shocked. First Salah. That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is not the Imam. First Salah. And so they delayed it a bit. But when he instructed Aisha radiallahu anha, go and tell them Abu Bakr must lead them in Salah. Then Aisha radiallahu anha went and everything had happened. Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, the first salah he led was that Isha salah on the Thursday before the death of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And thereafter, he had led 17 salahs. Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu in the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam led 17 salah. And three days before the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away, Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu anhu says, I heard him saying something very important. None of you should die except in the condition that you have a good perception of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't die until you have a good perception of whom you are returning to subhanallah. And from this we learn when people are of age, when we remind people, give them good news. Allah is merciful. Allah loves you. The good you have done, Allah will accept. The bad you have done, He will forgive. Ask Allah to forgive and Allah will forgive. So a person knows they are returning to the most merciful. Not to one who's going to punish you and destroy you and really throw you into the fire for no reason. May Allah protect us. As we always say, Ya Allah, we have hope in you that you will grant us paradise without reckoning, Ya Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The messenger is saying, three days before he passed away, Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu anhu says, I heard him say clearly that none of you should die until you have a good perception of your Rabb, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who have a good perception of Allah. We go through difficulties. We go through tribulations, trials, health matters. One of the companions walked in and saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in pain, in severe pain. He says, oh messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa you are going through pain. He says, oh, let me tell you 
that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put something of this nature in a person's life, any sickness, any pain that they go through, for as long as they are bearing sabr and patience, it wipes out or it releases their sins just like when you shake a tree with dry leaves and all the leaves happen to fall out that is how the person is cleansed so when we are going through difficulty the messenger in his last days said that it is just like a tree being shaken and all the leaves drop that's how the sins drop until the level is elevated May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa did not have any sin this was only elevation elevation of his status and it was the decision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and thereafter approximately two days before a day or two days before the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa passed away whilst Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu was about to perform the salah the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa felt slightly better and as he came out Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu went back and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam thereafter led the salah next to Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu with him declaring the takbir aloud so people could hear what was being said because of the soft voice of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa at that particular time. This was a day or two days before he had passed away sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Thereafter, one day before he passed away, he called for those who were his slaves and he freed all of them sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He had a few coins, gold coins, dananir, darahim, gold or silver coins. He gave them, the few that he had, six or seven, he gave them out in charity. And thereafter, his armor, his armor was in fact given to a Jewish man as collateral for some food that he had taken when he had had some guests, subhanallah. And the rest of his weapons that he had had, a few swords and so on, he gave them to the Muslimin as a gift. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And thereafter, the last day, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the time of Fajr, Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu was leading the salah. Fajr. Last day, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This was a Monday, the 12th of Rabi' al-Awwal. Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu leading the salah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, not well at all, but he got up in his own room and he moved the curtain from that curtain he could see what was going on he saw Abu Bakr leading the salah and he saw all the sufuf all the lines of all the believers fulfilling salatul fajr he was so happy and as the curtain moved Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu noticed that this is the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa who moved the curtain so immediately he began to move back because there is no ways that a man could lead Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in salah. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu was stepping backwards, firstly, when he saw his people and the Muslim ummah, he smiled, he was so happy, he was so happy. Aisha radiallahu anha says, it was as though he is looking at these people and he is so happy to say that the message has been fulfilled. Here are the people worshipping Allah alone after they were worshipping idols in this whole region. Subhanallah. So he was so happy and he then made a sign to Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu with his hand to say you continue leading the salah. So Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu continued leading the salah. That was the last salah that was led. That was the last salah that was led by Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu in the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That morning, he called his daughter Fatima. He tells her something in her ear, she begins to cry. Then he says something else in her ear, she begins to laugh. Later on, they asked her, Ya Fatima, what did your father tell you before he passed away? She says, the first thing he told me is, I'm not going to become better from this illness of mine. It's going to be the last and I'm going to be taken by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I began to cry. And secondly, he told me, don't worry, O Fatima. You are going to be the first one to join me. So I was so happy. From my family members, you are going to be the first one to join me. True to that, she was the first one to join Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam thereafter. Then he decided to call Al-Hasan wal Hussein his grandchildren. He kissed them on their foreheads. And he told the people to be kind to them. He told the people to be kind to his family members, to his grandchildren. And thereafter he called his wives. And he gave them advice and he reminded them about Allah 
and he reminded them who they were and their status and what they had chosen for indeed they were given a choice to choose the dunya or to choose Allah and the messenger they had chosen Allah and the messenger so the Prophet ﷺ reminded them of their duties and thereafter he tells his wife Aisha radiallahu anha oh Aisha I can still feel the taste and the pain after I had put that little piece of meat in my mouth from Khaybar when the lady tried to poison me. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all a lesson. So he could taste that and he says, I am feeling the effects of it, although he did not eat it. But what happened is, he just put it in his mouth and he's saying it still has had an effect on me. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then again he reminds his people, as salah as salah wa ma malakat aymanukum. Your treatment of your servants, your slaves and so on, be careful. Remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put them under your control or under your authority. Treat them in a proper manner. And in Islam, subhanallah, as we are all aware, that the slaves were freed one by one because any sin that was committed by people, the first way to achieve forgiveness is, do you have any slaves? If you do have, start freeing them. Subhanallah. You free a slave to gain forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is how slowly but surely all the slaves became free. And there they came a time now when there is no slavery. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Thereafter, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was in the room of Aisha radiallahu anha for that last week. And it was on the day that he was supposed to be with Aisha radiallahu anha. And at the same time, he was now on the lap of Aisha radiallahu anha, his wife, with his head on her lap, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Abdurrahman ibn Abi Bakr, the brother of Aisha radiallahu anha, walks in. And he had a miswak, he had the little root that is used to clean the teeth. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked at it. So Aisha radiallahu anha asked him, would you like it? He said, yes. So she took it because it was too hard. She put it into her own mouth and chewed it, made it soft and gave it to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who cleaned his teeth properly. And thereafter, he asked for a little bowl that was placed right next to him which had water in it. He would put his hands in the water and wipe his face and he would say, La ilaha illallah, inna lil mawti la sakarat. Indeed, there is none worthy of worship besides Allah. Definitely, death has come with its pangs, which means the pangs, the sakarat of death. Death has something known as the pangs of death. These are the last moments. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us the day we go. Then he raised his finger, tashahud, a finger that we all raise in salah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then looked up into the ceiling. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is on the lap of Aisha radiallahu anha. The public is not there. This is a private room where Aisha radiallahu anha is. And Aisha radiallahu anha says he started moving his lips. And I tried to hear what he said. And I caught his last words. These were the last words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Before I say these last words, a Nabi of Allah is shown his place in Jannah. And he is asked to go there or to remain and always they choose to go there obviously that is the best of places the angels of death that come they need to seek permission to take this ruh away they are granted it never ever are they not granted it by those who are supposed to be asked permission from so the prophet sallallahu responding this call he says ma'alladhina an'amta alayhim i want to be with those whom you have granted a favor upon minan nabiyyin from amongst those who were messengers was siddiqeen those who are truthful was shuhada those who are martyrs was salihin and those who are pious and then he says allahumma ghfir li o oh allah forgive me warhamni have mercy upon me wa alhiqni bir rafiq al a'la and let me join those who are in the loftiest of positions. He was already shown his position and he says, Oh Allah, take me there. And he continued saying, Allahumma ar-rafiq al-a'la until he was silent. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah 
wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. These were the last moments of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. These were the last words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It was a Monday, the 12th of Rabi' al awwal. His age was exactly 63 years according to the Islamic calendar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us lives that will be the coolness of lives that will be led within the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way that when we get to Jannah, we will be given what will be the coolness of our eyes. Ameen. Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu says, Wallahi, the best day that we ever saw and the day that was lit up in the most, in the biggest way was the day that the Prophet sallallahu entered Medina Munawwara. And the day that was the darkest day we ever saw, the day that we detested the most was the day, this particular day that the Prophet sallallahu passed away. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. News began to spread. People began to talk. Within Medina, the Prophet sallallahu has passed away. Omar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu got up with his sword. He says, whoever says the Prophet has passed away, I will strike his head. No one is going to say he's passed away today. He's not passed away. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. He's the same one who cried during this Hajjatul Wada, during the farewell pilgrimage, when he heard the verses, al yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum. But imagine the news. You know when people lose their little loved ones, the little children, they can't believe it. Are you sure? This was the best of creation. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Passing away into the akhirah. Subhanallah. And you have the Sahaba radiallahu anhum weeping, crying. And at the same time, Umar ibn al-Khattab says, no, don't even say he's passed away. So Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu had come. And when he came, he entered the room of his own daughter. He saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa covered. He opened his face and he kissed him on his forehead. He says, Bi abi anta wa ummi ya Rasulullah. May my mother and my father be sacrificed for you, O Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have sacrificed our mothers and fathers for you, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, you will never taste death twice. As for the death that was written for you, you have tasted it. That's it. It comes once and now at peace, subhanallah. And this is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told Fatima radiallahu anha, O Fatima, your father will never taste any pain after today. That's what he told his daughter. Your father will never taste any pain after today. This was moments before he passed away. He told his daughter Fatima radiallahu anha. And thereafter the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in that condition Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu comes out and he tells Umar ibn al-Khattab sit down, sit down, calm down. He says no I don't want. So Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu declares the shahada and begins to speak. He speaks to, his, to the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he says, Ayyuhannas, O people. They started gathering around him. Man kana ya'budu Muhammadan fa inna Muhammadan qad mata. Wa man kana ya'budu Allah fa inna Allah hayyun la yamutu. Whoever was worshipping Muhammad, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has passed away. Whoever was worshipping Allah, Allah is alive and never dies. Allah is the everlasting, subhanallah. These were the words of Abu Bakr. The people heard it. They understood it. And he read verses. وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ Indeed, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is but a messenger. That's the verse of the Quran. قَدْ خَلَتْ مِن قَبْلِهِ الرُّسُلُ Messengers before him have passed away. أَفَإِن مَّاتَ أَوْ قُتِلَ إِن قَلَبْتُمْ عَلَىٰ أَعْقَابِكُمْ If he passes away or he is killed, will you then turn back on your heels? Question that Allah is asking. وَمَنْ يَنْقَلِبْ عَلَىٰ عَقِبَيْهِ فَلَنْ يَضُرَّ اللَّهَ شَيْئًا Whoever turns back on their heels, if that happens, it will not harm Allah at all. وَسَيَجْزِ اللَّهُ الشَّاكِرِينَ And Allah will grant a good recompense to those who are thankful. When Umar ibn al-Khattab heard these words, he says, he calmed down. It's as though it's the first time I'm hearing these words. 
And indeed, these words are the truth. I remember, I recall hearing them now. But it's as though it's the first time I have heard these words. And then, subhanallah, there was a matter that needed to be addressed immediately. What was that? Who is going to be the leader? So there was a discussion. Some of the Ansar were suggesting someone. Some of the Muhajireen were suggesting someone. Until they all agreed unanimously. They agreed that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had granted virtue to Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu more than everyone else. He was together with him in, in the cave. He had been granted the authority of Salah. He was the one deputed for Hajj and so many other things that we may not even have mentioned. And because of that, every one of them pledged allegiance to Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu known as Al-Khalifatul Rashidah. The one who will take over as Amirul Mu'mineen after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And this pledge happened in a place known as Saqifatu Bani Sa'idah. If you go to Medina Munawwara today, there is a library known as Maktabat al-Malik Abdul Aziz. Right next to the library, there is a little garden. That place is known as Saqifatu Bani Sa'idah. To this day, it has a few date palms and that in it. If you visit the place, it would be interesting to look at it and to know what exactly happened there. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. This took the whole day because obviously so many people had come and they were deciding about the appointment and they were pledging allegiance. The allegiance took the whole day. The following day, on the Tuesday, subhanallah, towards the evening, the body of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was washed by Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu. He was the one who was washing the body, radiallahu an, and Usama bin Zayd, as well as Shakran, who was a freed slave of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they were pouring the water. And Al-Abbas, radiallahu an, the uncle of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, together with his two cousins, Al-Fadl and Qatham, these two of were turning the body whenever it needed to be turned, but they did not remove the clothing of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They had a discussion and they said with him, we're not going to take his clothes out. Meaning, in order to bathe him, as you know, when a person passes away, we are taught to bathe them. Wash them with water, nothing else. Water and a little bit of, uh, perhaps, we, when I say nothing else, I mean, you know, people spread rumor that we cut the body, we rip it, we do this, we do that. All that is tale, it's falsehood and it's actually that which people who dislike Islam utter because they want to keep people away from Islam. In Islam, where you need to wash the body thoroughly. You may use soap. At that time, they used what was known as sidr, the leaves of the berry tree known as the sidr. And they washed the body thrice. There was a man known as Aus ibn Khawli. He was the one whom, who had been holding the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, making him lean on him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They washed him. They enshrouded him in three sheets that were white sheets from Yemen. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam thereafter was there in the room of Aisha radiallahu anha. Now come time for janaza, salah. Prior to this, there was a discussion. Where should he be buried? So Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu says, I remember he said, messengers should be buried exactly where they pass away in order to resolve the dispute. So Abu Talha radiallahu anhu, he moved the bedding of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and dug exactly where he passed away. This was in the house of Aisha radiallahu anha. And thereafter, the people came in to read Salatul Janazah. They did not remove the body from there. People came in 10 by 10 small groups and they led Salatul Janazah. They read on their own, each one reading his own Salatul Janazah. There was no one who was an imam. They came in little groups. They read Janaza one after the other when the, the, from amongst the men, first the relatives, then the Muhajireen, then the Ansar. When they were finished, the women came also in groups. They led Salatul Janaza one after the other. When they were finished, then the, the younger people, those who were children and so on, were given the opportunity also. Obviously, these are those of understanding age. They came in, they also led Salatul Janazah and thereafter the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was buried exactly in that place that he had passed away on the spot and the grave had been dug known as a Lahad. Lahad is like a slight L-shape, L-shaped grave. So it's dug down and slightly towards one side so that the body is put into the little uh, portion that is dug going to the side and thereafter it is filled up with soil and with dust. This was... 
where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was buried. And subhanallah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us opening, to grant us goodness. This is the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Perhaps there will be more detail of what had transpired and how Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu was pledged allegiance to. When we speak inshallah on some occasion about the lives of these khulafa, starting with Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhum jami'an, may Allah be pleased with all of them. I'd like to end off by repeating what I said moments ago. This was the most blessed of all creatures, the highest in status of all the creatures. The one whom his qualities and characters were of such a high standard that by following them, not only would we achieve success in this world and the next, but we would be rewarded automatically just by following whatever he has brought. Today, the question I have as we have ended the series on the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Where are we? And where are his teachings? We claim to love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We claim to be his followers. We utter the shahada. We say so much. Can we leave even one bad habit? Can we leave the adultery that is being committed? Can we leave the drinking of the alcohol, the gambling, the interest, various other sins that we are committing, backbiting, stealing, usurping, harming one another. These are the last words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He warned us not to fight amongst one another. These were his last words sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his last week and throughout the last year of his life sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Indeed, we owe him a lot. And this is why the one who is deserving the intercession of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the greatest, is he who follows that example as best as he can. May Allah make us from those who can constantly pass blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala ali nabiyyina Muhammadin kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammadin kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Subhan rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al-mursaleen والحمد لله رب العالمين